This is the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E Select. Now this specific one in behind me has the comfort technology package. On top of that, it also is all wheel drive. So because this is the Select, so the base level of the vehicle, we've only got the option for the 68 kilowatt hour battery, but it's all wheel drive, which means that we're gonna be at around 340 kilometers or so roughly for the range. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and I'm super excited to be sharing this vehicle with you. This is going to be a little bit more of an in-depth walker and covering off some of the basic features and things like that. If you're looking for more of an in-depth look at that sync system, how it works, drop down in the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video specifically on that system. But let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun and see what the Mach-E Select has to offer. Starting off looking at some exterior styling of the vehicle. So this is a select version and it's got the comfort technology package. There are a few different options for the rim itself. If you're not a fan of the coloring of the rim, because it's almost like a charcoal gray, you could always look at doing some hydro dipping aftermarket, or you could look at a number of different options for aftermarket wheels. Looking at the rubber from the factory, it's a Michelin total performance, so a high performance tire, which is great because of the amount of horsepower and torque that's standard inside of these electric vehicles. We've got a nice fender pop it along the side, and then we've got a nice nice look to the headlamps themselves. Looking at some styling a little bit further down the vehicle. So we've got the Mach-E logo along the side door and that's gonna be for the driver and the passenger side. So it really makes it pop, especially in this color. So that black color there, it just looks, it looks absolutely stunning. Now I'm typically a fan of blue, but the black look in this thing, this is the first time I've ever seen one of these ones in person. And I absolutely love the look and the styling of this black select version Mustang. Looking at some standard technology inside of the vehicle. So we do have our backup camera. We've got the reverse sensing system that's going to be standard. And we also do have our blind spot system. So let's just know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Now, because we do have the comfort technology package inside of the vehicle, we do have the forward sensing system as well. So we can just kind of make out those forward sensors. And there also is the 360 camera. So right in front of that beautiful pony there along the top, as you can see, we've got a camera along the top there. And then just underneath both of our side view mirrors, there also is another camera. And that's going to give us a full 360 view of the camera, or the vehicle, I should say, as we've got the vehicle in reverse. Now, the vehicle itself is going to be available either in rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. From a power perspective, whether you look at the rear wheel or all wheel, they're both going to be able to push out the same 266 horsepower. Then, when it comes into the torque, that's where things are different. Rear wheel drive, we're gonna be at about 317 pound-feet of torque, while the all wheel drive is going to push out an impressive 428 pound-feet of torque instead. So plenty powerful in the all wheel drive system. Now, having said that, that extra power comes with a little bit of a caveat because it does affect how far you can drive the vehicle. In the rear wheel drive, it's going to be able to get about 370 kilometers, while the all wheel drive, you're about 10% less at 340 kilometer range. When we look at the standard battery, that's the only available battery choice inside of the select version of the vehicle. So the Mustang Mach-E is fully electric, which means we've got to plug in in order to be able to charge this thing up. We do have a cable that's going to come inside of the vehicle. It's about 20 feet or so roughly. Now, what I recommend though, is looking at the at-home charging station instead, because it's going to be optimized for the Mach-E and you're going to be able to get infinitely better timing when it comes down to charging the vehicle at home. Taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So along the very top, we've got our unlock and our lock button. We've got our trunk release as well as our horn or a panic alarm button. Now remote start, we can't actually remote start through our key fob. You're gonna have to go to the Ford Pass app on your cell phone. So that's a free app. You can remote start the vehicle. You can use your phone as a key and a number of other things just by downloading the Ford Pass app on your cell phone. Now we're looking at the select version of the vehicle. So the lift gate at a minimum is going to be power. Now, because this thing has the added technology package that also gives us a foot activated lift gate. So in order to actually lift the lift gate up because we can do it from the key fob if we really wanted to, there's a button just along the bottom there in order to be able to do it. But just above where our license plate is underneath, there's another release for the trunk. But because we're a foot activated power lift gate, if we've got our key fob in our pocket, hands full of groceries, whatever the case may be, all you're gonna do is just swipe your foot underneath and step back. And look at that, foot activated power. Let's have a peek at the cargo dimensions. All right, so cargo dimensions for the vehicle are going to be showing up. Now, one of the nice things is that the seats themselves are a 60-40 split. So 60% driver, 40% passenger. We can easily fold those down if we need to. Now, it's not a true fold flat, but at the same time, if we push some things on there, we will get a lot more storage out of it. Now, that's one of the nice things about this Mustang Mach-E is that not only do we have a nice look to it, but we've got a boatload of trunk space in comparison to the regular Mustang instead. 
Now take a peek how that differs when we've got that second row folded down. So a lot more spacing when it comes down to it. And because it's a 60-40 split, we can fold down one side or the other if we need to load in a little bit of cargo. Let's take a peek a little bit further inside. Now, as we start to move inside, so a few things to point out up along the very top, we can close the lift gate up if we need to. We've got a few lights along the very top, and this is the button that we're gonna press if we ever need to get inside the vehicle if we didn't have that foot activated lift gate. Moving inside a little bit more, as you can see, we do have a removable privacy shade. So it is really, really useful because it's going to lock into place and kind of protect anything that might be in the back of the trunk area there. Now, as we start to move inside, looking on the left-hand side, it's a really nice look to it. Tiny little bit of star storage space along the left-hand side. As we move over to the right, so a few things to point out, we've got our 12 volt port there, so we can plug some things if we need to, as well as a little light along the back. Now you can also kind of make it up, but we do have a little pony along the side. As we start to pull back, this is going to be the standard shade inside of the vehicle, the standard cover, I should say. We do have an option for a thermoplastic rubber tray instead. And lifting this up, as you can see, we do have our inflator kit. So we're not going to have a mini spare tire inside of this vehicle, strictly the inflator kit. And then we also do have our charging cable there. So that's going to be standard inside of the vehicle. And we do have the option for a home charging port instead. So you've got a few different options there to charge the vehicle up. Now, if you've ever been in the back seat of a Mustang before, you know that there is literally next to no spacing whatsoever. I'm six feet tall. The driver's seat is set up for somebody six feet tall. I still have a nice amount of knee room, good amount of foot space, and up overhead, I've got about two inches of head space as well. So really, really nice to know that if people are a little bit taller, you actually can get more than two people inside of the Mustang Mach-E, which is incredible. From a basic comfort perspective, this is incredible. Like, it feels really, really nice. We've got Ford's ActiveX seating material inside of it with some very unique stitching. Let's hop inside so you can see a few extras. Now taking a peek at some basics. So we do have pockets along the driver and the passenger seats. As we start to move down a little bit, we've got some basic fan controls as well as a few USB ports. So our USB and our USB-C. Now this is the ActiveX seating material inside of the Select. So we've got a nice unique stitching there. And we also do have a few cup holders. So pull that down to expose the cup holders, flip it back up in order to lock it back into place. Now on top of that, both sides, driver and passenger side, in the second row, we do have a handle along the top, and we also do have our cabin lighting, so we can turn that lighting on or off if we need to. Starting off on the outside, we do have our keyless entry system, so we'd enter in a five-digit number, and we've got the option of programming in a separate one if we wanted to, and we've got our unlock button, so we press, and we can just pop this door open, so really, really nice. Now because this has the technology package, we do have the seat memory button, so we've got our three individual seat profiles, our unlock and our lock button. Along the door, we've got our basic side view, our side view mirror control. We can power fold our side mirrors, and then we've got our window control buttons as well. We've got our basic door handle there, which is very, very unique compared to regular Ford vehicles. And as we start to move down, a little pocket along the driver's side door. Now on top of that, as we start to move forward, a few things to point out. We do have our max windshield defroster. We can figure out what's going on with our running lamps, and we've also got the ability to either increase or decrease the brightness of that cluster screen in the middle there. Moving down a little bit more, we've got the ability to pop this guy so we can double press, and that's going to be for the front mini trunk area. So as we hop in the front there, right now taking a peek underneath the hood. So this is where the engine would traditionally be inside of gas vehicles, but we've got a nice little storage compartment there. Emergency access on the outside as well. Now one of the nice things, this thing could essentially act as a cooler because we've got a little drain plug along the bottom as well. If you ever need to top up any fluids, literally, that's your option. Windshield wiper fluid, and that's really the only thing you're going to need to worry about as a Mach-E owner. Now, looking up, a little bit of styling underneath. As you can see there, we do have a pony along the top of the hood as well. Adjusting the driver's seat inside of the Mach-E, pretty straightforward. So because we've got the technology package inside of the Select, it's going to be fully power for the driver's side, partial power for the passenger side. So very straightforward to adjust the driver's seat. There's a few different levers along the side. Very first one, that's going to allow the seat to go forwards, backwards. We can go up and down with it. Now, what are the nice things? With the seat all the way down as far as it's going to go and as far back as it'll possibly go. So I'm six feet tall. I've got, without the sunroof, about three inches of headspace up overhead, plenty of space for my legs as well so if you're a little bit taller you know like six three six four you'll probably comfortably be able to get inside of this vehicle so we've got that first one that's going to bring the seat forwards and backwards the next lever which is going to be adjust the backrest so we can bring that forwards and backwards and then there's a little circular one a little bit further back behind that and that's going to be for our lumbar support so give us our give ourselves a little bit of extra support for our lower back Adjusting the steering wheel inside of the vehicle is also a straightforward process and it is manual inside of the vehicle. So by our left knee, we've got a little lever. We can crank that down and it's telescopic. So we can go in and out, we can go up and down with it. Once you've got that perfect position, you're just gonna click in order to lock it back into place. 
Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel. So a few things to point out. This is going to be a shorter video, so shorter going over some of the basics of the steering wheel cluster, as well as this guy, so that SYNC 4 system. If you're looking for the more in-depth walker in video, check down in the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video on how this works, as well as how the system works for the SYNC 4 screen. But the basics, we've got our adaptive cruise control system on the left side. On the right side, we can increase or decrease our volume, and we can also go between radio stations or songs. We can answer or hang up on a phone call, or we can use our voice command prompt. So the voice command prompt is going to let us change radio stations, make phone calls, and we can also navigate using our voice. So very straightforward there. Now, as you can see along the top right of the instrument cluster screen, so I'm going to actually move in a tiny little bit. So along the very top, we've got our park reverse neutral drive. Just along the top, we've got our basic speed. If we had navigation going, the navigation would also show on this instrument cluster. Off to the left side, we can see what's going on with our dynamic range. So as of right now, it's about 50% charge, which is going to be about 142 kilometers. Now, the vehicle itself is stationary, which is why the kilometer count isn't as accurate. As you start driving, you get that regenerative braking system going as well. The range is going to increase. Now, this one isn't, like I said, fully charged. So moving off to the left stick, so very straightforward there. We can pull in front of us in order to be able to turn our high beams on if we needed to. We've got our blinkers as well, so shows up very, very nicely there. Off to the right stick. So looking there, we can adjust what's going on with the windshield wiper fluid. We can turn our windshield wipers on. And we've also got a button for our rear wiper. So we can move that rear wiper on or up or down as necessary in order to be able to turn it on or off. We're simply gonna pull in towards us in order to get that front windshield wiper going. And we're gonna push away in order to get the back fluid going. Now this is the all new SYNC 4 system inside of the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. So one of the nice things about this system is that we do have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay capabilities. We do have factory navigation that's going to be built out. So very, very nice look to it. But if you prefer to use Apple Maps, Google Maps or Waze, you can connect wireless over your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in order to use those, uh, those maps on this screen. So really, really nice look to it. But looking at some basics, we've got some different drive modes. We've got our Engage, Whisper, Unbridled. We've got access to our parking. So if we look there, we can see what's going on with our park assist. So that's one of the nice things. The vehicle itself does have park assist, so it can help out with parallel and perpendicular parking. Again, check down in the description below for a direct link to see how that active park assist system works. We've got our basic driver assistance settings. So some basic settings, we've got our auto hold with our traction control and additional driver assistance settings. So we've got adaptive cruise control, our lane keeping system, which works a couple different ways. So we've got our basic mode, which is going to be an alert. So the alert, if we start to veer over without signaling, it's gonna give us a steering wheel shake. The aid is actually going to give us a gentle nudge and recenter us back into our lane. The alert and the aid are going to do both. So really, really great from a basic safety perspective. We've got some pre, we've got some basic settings. So pre-collision assist, pre-collision assist. If the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's actively going to break for us. Now, if those features drive you nuts, you do have the option of turning it off if you really wanted to. Our blind spot system, that lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the, of the vehicle. So we can just see that orange light highlighting there as we start to go on or off with it. So that lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side. We've got a reverse brake assist. So if you're backing up and the vehicle senses that there's something behind you and you're still going, it'll automatically brake for you. So a lot of great settings from that perspective. I do recommend keeping the majority of them on. We've got some basics for our general settings, display, clock, connectivity, and et cetera. Along the very top, we've got some hotkeys as well for a radio, phone, navigation, and a number of other things. Now, one thing to note is that we do have a digital owner's manual now for vehicles that are equipped with SYNC 4. So you're not going to get a physical printed owner's manual with your vehicle purchase. We would just log in, or we would start up our vehicle, I should say, and then just turn on the owner's manual in order to figure out what's going on. But we do also have the option of going online in order to find it. So check down in the description below for a direct link off to the owner's manual on Ford's website. Now, one of the nice things about this screen as we start to move down, we do have a fully digital screen for the most part. So we've got our basic climate control settings so we can adjust what's going on with our driver passenger side. And one of the nice things is that we do have a few different options there. So dual zone climate control. So if somebody likes things a little bit warmer, colder, et cetera, Moving along the top, as you can see there, we've got our air conditioning, max air conditioning, air circulation, our e-heat. Now the e-heat is essentially going to be because we are in an electric vehicle, so turning that system on or off. We can figure out what's going on with the actual airflow, so to our windshield face, feet, or a combination of the above, and dual zone climate control, so we can set that up separately for the driver passenger. Along the very bottom, because we've got the technology package, we do have heated front row seats, which are really, really nice, so we can easily adjust those if we want to, so very nice. And we've also got our heated steering wheel. Now, one thing that's unique is that we've got our power button so we can turn the audio system on or off, and then we've got a physical knob in order to be able to adjust the volume. 
So I really love the fact that we've got this nice little touch there. It was one of the interesting things like you could, it is a little bit more challenging to be able to adjust the volume using your finger. So by doing the old school dial pad, it does make it a little bit easier to navigate and it gives it a little bit of a unique edge over other EVs that are on the market. As we start to move down a bit more, because we've got the technology package, we do have the wireless charging pad. We've got a few cup holders. Now, I do actually love this. Like, it's got like a faux carbon fiber look along the top tray, faux carbon fiber look along the bottom there. And we also do have a little storage tray underneath that we can just kind of make out there as well. Now, as we start to move down a little bit, we've got a hot button press for our park assist system. So it can help us out with parallel, perpendicular parking, etc. We've got our four-way blinkers, our parking brake, park reverse neutral drive and then our low gear now one of the nice things about this system is that if we're in one of the other gears so let's say if we're in drive we don't actually need to physically switch back out to park if we're in drive and we just turn the car off it's automatically going to flip us back in park instead which is a really great feature Moving down a little bit more, we can lift this guy up and we've got a little slider and we've got a little storage area. So as you can see there, we've got a tiny little storage space there and we've also got another 12 volt port. I can click and then order to lock that back into place. Now, as we start to move up, so one thing to point out, we do have an auto dimming rear view mirror. That's going to be standard across the select lineup of the vehicle. And moving up a little bit more, we do have the option for the hands-free driving, which is not available as of yet, but that feature is coming soon, that blue oval driving. And what that's going to do is essentially give us hands-free driving on some highways. So it's really, really great. That feature is coming very, very soon on the Mustang Mach-E as well as the Ford F-150. So available there as an option, but standard inside of the Mach-E. Moving up a little bit more, we do have a few cabin light controls, as well as our sunglasses holder. Vehicle itself is equipped with home link, so if we've got a garage door opener at home, we can program that code in. We've got a card holder. Moving down, we've got our vanity mirror, as well as our lights. Click that and open it up, and we've got the option of sliding this out a little bit more if we need to block some sun. Click it in order to lock it back into place. Now this specific vehicle does not have that panoramic roof, but if it did, it would stretch along the entire top and it does look very, very nice and opens things up really great. And that's honestly, that's gonna be the basics of the vehicle. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E Select. What did you think? If you have any questions, drop down in the comments section below and let me know, and I'm more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. If you enjoyed the content, give it a thumbs up, think about sharing it with your social networks or subscribing to the channel. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe. Now, one thing to note, this one does not have that panoramic roof that is available as an option. It's going to come standard in some of the... Inside of the side. Top of that, we've got a nice flender. Uh, flender. Nice flender. <laughs>